Hello everyone, I'm Mervet al Asnaj for uh, PCR Online, uh, live from ESC Congress. And with me today is uh, Professor Peter Smith. We're going to discuss the Compare Absorb trial today. Dr. Smith, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Mervet. Well, we know that the one-year results of the uh, Compare Absorb trial were previously published at Euro Intervention in 2020. And what we saw there is the bioabsorbable uh, scaffold uh, compared with the um, everolimus eluting stent was non-inferior in terms of target lesion failure. We did see an increase in the event rate in terms of device thrombosis and um, target vessel MI. But we're excited to learn about the five-year results which are being presented here at ESC. Before we get into the results though, I want to tap into the methodology. So if you can just tell us about the design of the trial very briefly. Yes, I will. Thank you very much, uh, Mirafat. Um, the Compare Absorb trial is a randomized controlled trial comparing absorb versus science in a complex PCI population that is high risk for restenosis. We had this hypothesis that with, um, with patients that are high risk for restenosis, a BVS therapy might benefit the most on the long term. Um, so we try to, to, to limit the target lesion failure rate on the long term with BVS compared to the science. That was our um, objective. And the second objective was that we also wanted to, to investigate the, 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 the benefit of the implantation technique PSP um, in, um, that was not tested before um, because other trials that started showed an increase in, in late events and therefore this PSP concept about pre-dilatation and sizing and post-dilatation was, was developed and we adopted that concept from the start in our trial. So this is an investigator initiated trial which is why the results are something we're all anticipating very um, much. So can you tell us about the five-year results, any different from the one-year results? Yeah. Um, yeah, they in certain, re re certain respect they are different than, the, than the, of course, the five-year results. Uh, we have a very good follow-up of uh, almost 96% of all our patients up to five years, which, is, which I have to congratulate our, all our investigators uh, for, for, this, for this great work. Um, and what we see is that TLF um, at five years is still numerically in favor of science compared to Absorb. Um, it's not reaching statistical significance, but the num uh, numerically the uh, TLF rate on Absorb is still um, approximately 1.5% higher than with, uh, with science. Um, what we see is that the curves initially start to diverge in the, at the index, uh, what we have presented at the one year, but then the curves run more or less parallel. Then as a little surprise, we see a little uptake on events with Absorb between three and four years, and after four years the curves run parallel or converge. So there might be also on the long term potential some benefit. Yeah, so very interesting. And how do you account for um, the mild diversion that was noted around four years? Yes, it was noted between three and four years, and it was mainly driven by clinically indicated target lesion revascularization, not scaffold or, uh, or am I a thromb uh, not scaffold thrombosis or myocardial infarction? Not so much. It was mainly driven by clinically, uh, clinically in indicated target lesion revascularization. And that is indeed interesting and it's different than was seen in other long term outcome studies like the Absorb 4 5 year results, uh, where they saw some in uptake up to three years and then the curves ran parallel. However, in our trial, the curves diverge a bit after three years and, and not before three years. Now you mentioned something very important and it was you were looking at implantation technique and you wanted to make sure that it was optimal for this trial. And here at ESC we've seen the ACS guidelines um, emphasize to a certain degree the use of intracoronary imaging where now it's afforded a class 2A indication. How much intracoronary imaging was used in the compare absorb and how important is it, in your opinion, in clinical practice? It's a good question, and indeed, um, uh, we recommend that um, to use intervascular imaging uh, specifically in our Compare Absorb trial, specifically for the uh, uh, vessel size 
below the 2.75. So for especially for the small vessel size vessels that were allowed to be treated with scaffolds, we advised to uh, use intravascular imaging because that was also for the absorb three the the, the the main reason why they 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 saw this where they where they saw this the difference in TLF in favor of science that it was on, mainly on the small vessels. Um, so we advised to, to have imaging. Nevertheless, um, we had 15% IFAS in, uh, in, in uh, both arms and 10% of OCT in the absorb arm. So in total, 25% of the patients had intravascular imaging guidance. And I think there is room for improvement because 25%, maybe it should be much higher, especially specifically for BVS. Yeah, and for a complex uh, population. Um, sure. How did you define complex lesions or complex disease um, in uh, compare absorb? Yes, we uh, we aimed specifically at patients at high risk for restenosis. So we aimed at patients with diabetes or multi uh, and or multivessel disease. And if that was not present, we aimed for complex lesions, meaning long lesions, more than 28 millimeters, a CTO. Uh, bifurcation le lesion um, and um, and small vessels. Yeah. So yes, certainly high risk. Yeah. Um, and I want to congratulate you on the um, exceptional follow up. In spite of the COVID coming in between, um, you still managed to follow up your patients. Do you think we can get even longer term follow up from the compare absorb? Yes, definitely. We will. It's our per protocol. We have a seven year follow up, which which is also a unique feature of compare absorb because. All the other trials stopped at the follow-up at five years. Our trial will do our follow-up up to seven years, and we have the possibility to extend up to 10 years. So I, I truly hope that in the end, in the long term, we might see uh, some difference pop up between science and, and, and absorb in favor of the absorb technology. Well, thank you very much, and thank you all for listening in, and hope you can uh, look up the compare absorb uh, results in PCR online as well. Thank <laughs> you.